So today's uh, judgment that we are discussing is the 2016-11 SCC 182. I'm sure uh, all of you had a look at it and have a broad idea what is the matter about. This is the GUVNL versus MPO limited judgment, a judgment delivered by Justice Chalameshwar and Justice Sapre. <clears throat> Uh, this issue is under the Electricity Act and therefore, while we are preparing for the AOR examination, I think what would be important is we keep in mind the relevant provisions, the Act which are involved in it. Therefore, the Electricity Act 2003 is the primary, primary Act under which this judgment has been del delivered and Section 86 would be relevant under this. Uh, it, it is basically a judgment under the power purchase agreement, uh, which has been executed between the parties and what would be the tariff which would be applicable to them is the issue under consideration. Along with this, I'll just now narrate what are abroad because I don't know if any, everyone is aware of the facts. So just laying down the basic facts for your understanding what this case was about. We are talking about an issue of tariff for procurement of power by the distribution licensees from solar energy projects. Therefore, uh, while you write your papers, this is a solar energy project, which is important in that context. And there is a power tariff, which has been fixed by the GERC, that is the Gujarat Electricity Regulatory Commission under section 82. It has the power to fix the tariffs. What would be payable by uh, what would be payable to the distribution licenses? Now, therefore, under this, the first order was passed on 29-1-2010, a power tariff order fixing the rates of tariff which would be applicable to the case. It said that the tariff for procurement of electricity generated by projects employing solar photovoltaic technology was fixed at rupees 15 per kilowatt for the initial 12 years and rupees 5 per kilowatt for the remaining 13 years, that is from the 13th year to the 25th year. So the tariff order was applicable between the parties for 25 long years. Uh, initially, the rate was supposed to be high and subsequently it was to be only 5 rupees. This was what was provided in the first tariff order as to what would be the charges which would be applicable. Accordingly, on the basis of this uh, order passed by GERC, there was an agreement or the power purchase agreement which was executed between the first res respondent, that is MCO, and GUVNL on the other side. That Power purchase agreement was executed on 9th of December 2010. This was in relation to Surendra Nagar district. And the date of commissioning as per the first tariff order was 31st of December 2011. So the tariff order said that that would be the date uh, by which all the projects, the solar projects would start commissioning and thereafter the rates would be applicable. The judgment also indicates the clauses which were important and the clauses were 5.1 and 5.2, uh, which is in para three of the judgment. These two clauses were applicable and they indicated the rates and charges which would be payable. Now, article 5.2 will be important for us because that is where the interpretation was actually under consideration before the court. And therefore, if you see para three, where article 5.1, 5.2 has been quoted, uh, it said that 5.2 I'm referring to, GUVNL shall pay the fixed tariff mentioned here under for the period of 25 years. The tariff would be determined by the commission and it indicated the two rates, which I just said, 15 and five. Thereafter, comes one clause which says that above tariff shall apply for solar projects commissioned on or before 31st December 2011 in case the commissioning of solar project is delayed beyond this date 
GUVNL shall pay the tariff as determined by the GERC for solar projects effective on the date of the commissioning of solar projects or above mentioned tariff, whichever is low. So if on the date of commissioning, there was a different order, a tariff order fixing the rates and the above tariff, which was 15 and 5, then the lower tariff will apply is what the clause is. And the entire judgment is on the interpretation of this clause as to what was applicable between the parties. So you, have, you would have uh, noted that the rates are 15 and 5, which are given in the first tariff order. Thereafter, what happens is the project could not be commissioned on that date because there was a change of site. And therefore, uh, the petitioner and the respondent number one, GUVNL and MCO, entered into a supplementary agreement. That agreement was executed on 7th of May 2011, which is a date beyond the date, you know, uh, uh, the date is before the date of the commissioning under the first order, but the commissioning happens after that. So the actual commissioning by the respondent number one is somewhere on 2nd of March 2012. By that period, a second tariff order was issued by the GERC. The second tariff order was dated 27th of January 2012. In the second tariff order, it talks about two possibilities. I'll also indicate what is important in the first tariff order. And it basically was in relation to section 32 of the Income Tax Act. So for our papers, section 32 of the Income Tax Act will also be relevant and you must rely on that. It is also quoted in this judgment. Uh, what is section 32? Now section 32 talks about depreciations and the benefit of accelerated depreciation under the Income Tax Act, specifically under section 32. So under the first tariff order, that we just saw, there was a clause that wherever the commissioning is delayed, uh, the, and this is all in relation to the accelerated depreciation, which will be beneficial under the first tariff order. This clause of de accelerated depreciation was slightly changed in the second tariff order, which was issued in 2012. The second tariff order basically brought about a small change, which is indicated in para phi onwards in the judgment. And it said that the tariff fixed under the said order for the projects generating electricity energy through SPV technology, availing the benefit of accelerated depreciation is less favorable to the power producers and is more and is vice versa as well. Therefore, interpreting this clause, the Supreme Court was examining whether the respondent number one will be entitled to the benefit under the first tariff, whether it will be bound by the terms of the first tariff or it will be bound by the second tariff. The case of the respondent before the authorities below was that since the date of commissioning of the project happened after the second tariff order, Therefore, it is entitled to the rates which are applicable in the second tariff order. The petitioner was arguing that since the power purchase agreement was executed somewhere in 2010 and the clauses were indicated over there, therefore, the power purchase agreement will be applicable and the clauses which are there under that will, would be governing the parties. And since that clause specifically under 5.2 said that it is the lower rate which would be applicable. The Supreme Court has also confirmed the same to say that the tariff which will be determined by the GERC would be on the date of commissioning or the above mentioned tariff, whichever is lower. So Supreme Court finally said that as you will have to be governed by the power purchase agreement, you are bound by the terms and conditions of the power purchase agreement and the rates applicable or mentioned over there. Since the rates in the first tariff order were lower 
then the second tariff order therefore under clause 5.2 uh, the rate applicable would be under the first tariff order and not the second tariff order so the respondent number 1 had therefore agitated and filed a petition and that petition was filed under section 86 before the gerc and under that clause uh, in in para 7 the prayers of the petition are mentioned what were the prayers so from perspective of uh, the aor examination the prayers in the petition should also be highlighted to indicate what was the kind of relief that was prayed by the respondent number 1 because it was his petition and in prayer a of his petition he said that the commission be pleased to hold and declare that the petitioner is entitled to claim the tariff applicable to megawatt solar photovoltaic projects not availing of accelerated depreciation as per tariff order dated 27 1 so the defense or the ground on which the respondent in the supreme court approached the gerc was that it did not avail the accelerated depreciation and therefore it is governed by second tariff order and not the first tariff order this is how the petition was filed this petition which was filed was allowed in its favor by the gerc by its judgment which was challenged by guvnl before the uh, tribunal uh, the appellate tribunal called the aptel aptel also confirmed it in favor of mco the respondent saying that it will be governed by the second tariff which is applicable on the date of the commissioning and the rates which are applicable to it because it, he did not claim an accelerated depreciation this is what went uh, transpired and this is on the basis of which the courts below or the tribunal below had passed the orders those summary of findings you will find in uh, para 10 of the present judgment and therefore the gu vnl challenged that judgment before the supreme court and para in para 12 uh, the supreme court has again uh, considered and thereafter also laid down substantial questions which are relevant so you may see at those substantial questions which have been framed by the court which were important that is there from para 12 onwards you will find and then the supreme court went on to dis- uh, went on to discuss and section 32 on the depreciation has also been carved out by supreme court in para 17 where it indicated what kind of depreciations they are entitled to and it has also uh, carved out the rules which were applicable for depreciation so on these basis uh, the supreme court has looked into as to when can a solar project be entitled to claim depreciation of this the court has also found that under the income tax act you uh, the the solar project had the right to claim the depreciation and therefore that right cannot be taken away however the supreme court says that even if you have that right to claim uh, or not to claim a depreciation you are bound by the terms and the agreement which has been done in the power purchase agreement therefore it says that the clauses clauses 5.1 and 5.2 are sacrosanct you cannot go beyond your clauses and because you have executed that agreement uh, being aware being conscious of the fact as to what is the agreement about and what would be the rates applicable so therefore you cannot then subsequently move and say that i am not bound by it because uh, under the first tariff order it was slightly costly for the first respondent but in the second tariff order so the commissioning happens late and therefore the defense was that just because the commissioning has happened late i am entitled to the benefit and i would be governed by the second tariff order so the supreme court disregards the that submission and says that though your commissioning has acted, happened afterwards but you would be bound by the clauses 5.2 and the rates which would be applicable will be the rates which are lower the the rates which are lower at the relevant time and therefore uh, the rates of the first power uh, first order tariff order 
it said that would be applicable to the parties and therefore these findings uh, you will see in the uh, paras 20 to 25 are the factual parts where the supreme court is dealing then para 28 onwards uh, it, it has discussed the rasna case rasna case was also on similar identical lines but it is a tribunal order because there was no other law on the same issue so it's an uh, judgment by aptil on which the GUVNL had relied upon. The Supreme Court has in Para 28 discussed the Rasna judgment. However, it says that uh, that judgment would not be applicable to them because uh, the prayers and the uh, facts of those uh, of that case were found to be not applicable in the present case. So in Para 29, uh, the Supreme Court has discussed why this judgment, what are the findings and why this judgment will not be applicable to them. And then thereafter, para 32, uh, for your purposes, I think para 32 onwards are the findings on law, which would be important for you. Where it discusses as to how the power purchase agreements are very important and whatever has been decided in the power purchase agreement, those clauses will be strictly followed because the principle was can just that uh, the agreement which is there and the clauses which it has, would it be uh, strictly followed by them or can you because of the subsequent changes because the commissioning has happened later and there is a second tariff order which is applicable, will you be bound by the second one? So Supreme Court says that the power purchase agreement has to be respected. The clauses under it has to be followed and the rates applicable to them as may be provided in clauses would be the rates which would be binding on the parties. This is how the judgment has discussed the entire thing. And uh, of course, Section 32 of the Income Tax Act otherwise has no bearing. It is only on the depreciation, the uh, the basis on which the respondent one was resting its case that it's a depreciation that it had not availed and therefore the tariff would be uh, would be a separate tariff for it and not the initial one is what discussed by, by the Supreme Court in para 33 onwards and 35 is also a discussion on the income tax act and that's how at para 38 39 they again emphasize uh, how important Article 5.2 is between the parties. So this is how uh, the appeal was. The appeal was of the GO, GUVNL appeal was finally allowed with cost. And uh, they, this uh, one defense was also that there was no substantial question of law involved in the issue and therefore it should have, the appeal should have been dismissed. But uh, that also has been rejected by the Supreme Court and said that uh, th this was an important issue and therefore uh, it has allowed the appeal with cost uh, to be payable by the respondents. So this is how the entire case is about. Any questions, any queries anyone has, we can discuss. Yeah, so I think Anil Bajaj is asking, is there any format in which to answer? So ideally, I think uh, the format would be best to lay out the basic facts of the case. The question of law, you can indicate the important uh, provisions which are applicable and then you can indicate the findings of the court. This is how I think best the judgment can be dissected. There is one question by Chayan Sarkar, I guess. He's saying what kind of questions can be asked pertaining to a particular judgment. So many a times the, the question is as to uh, to do a critical analysis of so-and-so judgment, they may indicate. So there you specifically have to do a critical analysis. And second way can also be that they may give an example, giving out, uh, you know, factual basis, just like a moot court. And they may just lay down the facts and ask what, what would be the approach or what is legally sound and that's how they may indicate who are the parties involved there was a power purchase agreement and uh, would they be bound by the agreement something of that sort 
so a question can be in a narrative form and then they may ask an advice as to what would be the law applicable so there you can then indicate the provisions and the judgment which is there uh, mr joshi uh, though i could not uh, listen the entire uh, discussion but uh, uh, broadly i feel that since uh, uh, the respondent company entered into an agreement for power purchase and uh, that agreement would be definitely governed by the terms and conditions entered into between those two parties right so so uh, like uh, what 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 were the reasons that uh, the the commissioning of the project was delayed because originally as per the uh, first tariff order it should have been commissioned by 31st december 2011 and they could start uh, in march 2012 so uh, what 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 was the basis uh, for the for the respondent to claim uh, the tariff as per the second order merely that, that the commission is late yeah so the the project and, side and they could not there. claim the accelerated accelerated depreciation under the income tax act these were the only right. two grounds these were the only two grounds so so as far as i understand if the commissioning was delayed Uh, who is who is at fault because of the delay in commissioning yeah so the respondent was supposed to do it within a time frame and Correct. because uh, it did not do it so obviously that has also weighed with the court that you could not do the commissioning within time and therefore uh, you will have to be for, uh, bound by the first agreement the benefit was i'll just tell you what was the guarantee no, even even uh, if i speak as a uh, layman everyone yes. is bound by the agreement entered into what are the terms and conditions i cannot claim that uh, because you are entering uh, uh, into agreement with other party that a uh, much better conditions so i must be given benefit of those conditions no so one of the clause was that on the date of the commissioning yes uh, the the tariff order which is applicable will also be applicable so the defense or the the ground of respondent emco was that when the date of commissioning happened the second tariff order had kicked in okay. if that order was applicable to all parties i should also be governed by the second clause uh, the second order the second tariff order and not the first tariff order so so why that uh, plea was rejected by the uh, court if the if yes, the so, agreement say so that what would ever whatever the tariff would be applicable on the date of commissioning you will get the benefit Uh, so therefore i was just reading that 5.2 proviso which is there if you see uh, para 3 if you have the scc page 187 bottom no i don't i don't have the scc page i okay. have the copy of the judgment okay. from the site so i could yeah, not correlate the uh, the paragraph numbers you were referring probably they are different oh if you see uh, 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 if you see clauses 5.1 and 5.2 somewhere para 3 4 it must be there The para starts the first five, respondent five, produces. Five point one. Uh, uh, this uh, this is the article five rates and charges. Para five point yes. one, five point two. Yes. Okay. Now, so five point two is carved out. Thereafter, three lines uh, just below five point. The tariff which is indicated fifteen for first twelve years and five rupees for thirteenth to twenty fifth year. So the the bottom lines uh, which are uh, in uh, yes. in bold letters in case the commissioning of the project is delayed beyond yes. so and so date, GU VNL shall pay the tariff as determined by the GERC for solar yes. projects effective on the date of commissioning of the solar power project or above mentioned tariff, whichever is lower. So the EMCO was trying to only interpret the first part, which the Supreme Court has rejected, and saying that. Uh, for solar projects effective on the date of the commissioning of the projects but the supreme court then went on to say that whichever is lower is the important factor correct and therefore the first uh, rate first tariff order rates and the second tariff order rates since there is a difference between both of them therefore it said that the first tariff order which is the lower one should be applicable correct but emco was re was not reading the second part which is the whichever is lower it yes, does not read that uh, probably this this entire uh, litigation is on account of some, some poor advice 
<laughs> maybe because it is clear that uh, you see if you are yes. claiming claiming benefit under second tariff you are not entitled because it is clearly stated that whatever is lower you will be paid so yes. your first order is uh, lower correct so that would be applicable that's right and therefore that emphasis you will find in para 25 in also fact, in fact in fact this clause last clause that whichever is lower is 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 for is for in the favor of the uh, gujarat urja vikas nigam limited yes yes that they could have they could have invoked this uh, clause and could have said that uh, because you have uh, your commissioning is delayed we will recalculate your cost and if yes. that is lower then we will pay the lower amount in any case yes. uh, the 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 tariff mentioned in the first order in this power purchase agreement if they, they are not entitled for for a paisa beyond that correct correct it could have gone below yes therefore so, uh, in para 39 if you see the supreme court has emphasized this three words whichever is lower and then uh, interpreted that so uh, i was a little confused like in other cases leading cases uh, i understand i i am of the perception that uh, there must be something landmark so uh, in this in this particular landmark leading case i could not find out what is the special Uh, feature of this uh, judgment. Can you can you I, highlight that? I cannot that? comment on that. <laughs> I am only asked to. No, I I am just trying a, to understand. Yes. You see, it is like any other uh, uh, judgment where the issue between two parties has been decided. Right. If we go, if we go to some other judgments, maybe there are various where we understand that some uh, some a big issue. Substantial has been, question is involved. Substantial yeah. question of law. Rather, there there was. there was an issue before the court whether there is any substantial question of law involved yes so towards the end of the judgment the supreme court answered that yes there is something involved but uh, it is not been specifically uh, uh, framed if we read the last uh, two three paragraphs of this yeah one defense was that even there is no substantial question of law yes yes that was one of the defense but they reject in the second last para so i was little confused that what is uh, uh, at, uh, from what angle i i should uh, uh, read this for the purpose of this uh, uh, preparation so probably uh, it's only section 86 and section 32 of the income tax act those are the important and power purchase agreement generally and the sanctity no, of even, the even, even no the issue was not under the uh, under section 32 of the income tax act there was no dispute and that was on, yeah only the benefit was sought under that that so so it, the, the, their contention probably was that because i am not claiming accelerated depreciation and the first uh, the, the the price uh, in the first order has been computed taking into consideration the factor that uh, the, the producer will be uh, claiming accelerated depreciation yes so uh, on that basis he was claiming that he is entitled to a little higher price because right. i am claiming less depreciation so i will be paying more uh, income tax but yes. that has not been th- th- that is not the issue here at all he was claiming yes. though though he is not supported that claim also that because right. of the loss of the yes, i i cannot claim accelerated depreciation so i am losing something when that is not uh, demonstrated so uh, so in general we can say that there is nothing specific like there is there are other landmark judgments correct 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 Okay, I was trying to find out that answer. Correct, correct. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hi, Nachi. This is Pallavi. Hi, Pallavi. Hi. Good to see you and good to listen to you teach us. It was it was really wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So my question to you was is almost what Arun Ji just asked. you know i was not able to find out what would be the substantial question of law here because i also felt that it was this case was more of bordering towards uh, you know right, determining of rights between two parties you know so 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 again as mr arun ji has asked has already asked you so what do i write what do I, when the question comes what was the substantial question of law involved here so what do we write here so you can see uh, if you have the scc judgment Yeah, but the only issue is that you are uh, reading from SCC. We, uh, we are we are actually going to SCR because that's that's okay. the what that's what would be given to us. But if you can tell me the 
first word of it we will know which paragraph would that be it will so, be like you know two three paragraphs here and there so that's the only difference yeah so the para para starts by saying however that does not solve the problem on hand uh, number number pair number 23 23 so around 23 should be there 23 right okay okay yeah no okay yes how about is also yeah. start with the party sudhaba city चॉइस not to avail the benefit of accelerated depreciation after signing the pcs okay okay so that would be the first question of law and the be, second yeah. will be the second one yeah yeah the second is whether the respondents right under the income tax act to make such a choice would be so exercised which would result in a situation where the appellant would be obliged under the ppa to purchase the power generated by the first respondent for a period of 25 years without knowing the price at which the first respondent would be obliged to supply the power so i think the first question is a relevant question which on uh, probably you can emphasize on that okay okay so basic uh, i think vj yeah so uh, so basically uh, tell me one thing in uh, so what is the law laid down here the law laid down here like how, how do i define that so uh, basically uh, it is saying that the power purchase agreement which have been executed between the parties and the clauses which have been provided by them uh they are sacrosanct mm-hmm. and therefore they are binding between the parties and the uh, the clauses of the agreement have to be strictly followed by the parties this is this is one substantial okay. thing that appears okay. okay so bindingness of the agreement okay. between the parties okay. yeah so i guess this is the law but, of the uh, land but, but an agreement is always binding between the yes. parties right yeah that's the law of the land <laughs> yeah so it is just quite confusing it was i was just scratching my head trying to re- <laughs> it already it is a technical one <laughs> yeah. and then so finally could not could not put it into the ar requirement principles could not place I it know. anywhere here Anyways, yeah. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Nachi. I can't your, go beyond um, the judgment, you know. so really. <laughs> yeah. No, no. We can meet Justice Telemeshu <laughs> yeah. and talk to him. Expert, yeah, but because yeah, ask how your expert was there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, because an expert is available, and we are allowed to uh, seek uh, resolution of uh, any issue. So we are yes. trying to find out if you can help him. <laughs> Maybe we are missing yeah. something. <laughs> So you're yeah. not missing something. Try to understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but thanks. Thank you so much for Thank that. You. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.